going guys there's a big margin here I uh, hope y'all are having a great uh, holiday so far um, I'm here to uh, do a final thoughts of Lars as of season 4 at this current state of time Lars as y'all know has been my uh, favorite character since Tekken 6 on his release date since the first moment I saw the trailer of him I loved everything about the trailer. I love that he looks like a Super Saiyan, which there's a reference to Dragon Ball Z, which I got my name Majin from. And also, this um, everything about the anime factor they put into this character when they, I guess, in the development process. And also, the like I said, the creators actually loved him back then. They actually made him the lead of Tekken Force, um, different things that they did with him to make him very, you know, presentable to a lot of people in the young crowd, the older crowd, because it references old, you know, older animes we grew up watching. And also, he was the main protagonist in the, um, the Tekken story in Tekken 6, pretty much along with Jin. So he was a very important character in Tekken 6, and now as the, you know, the story progressed forward they just completely forgot about him because I guess he didn't gain the traction that uh, they was looking for so they just shifted their focus to other characters you know which would probably be Jen again as usual of boredom but um yeah speaking of that um again we're gonna talk about Lars as of Tekken 7 season 4 and how he started from one of the greatest characters in the game to one of the worst characters in the game. All right, um, starting with Tekken 6, Lars had incredible tracking. I'm just saying, just like that, he had incredible tracking. Uh, moves like this here, tracks both directions, pretty much 100%. <laughs> so you really couldn't sidestep this at all. Um, the hurt boxes was totally different back then. This game uses Unreal Engine which the uh, her bosses are spherical, which uh, creates a lot of problems on uh, certain angles, certain moves when you sidestepping. And the models are a lot smaller on this version. Uh, Tekken 6 had uh, more range as far as Lars. He had more jab range. It's like his range is, is kind of gone and also his jabs track well both directions. And also, along with the jabs, his uh, arc blast, you know, the signature arc blast, this had way more range. Uh, he can literally hit from probably around this range here and taking six and would connect. This game, they decreased the range. They also decreased the range on this as well to pretty much nothing. You have to really just be in their face now. You see how it's still not hidden? So yeah, they decreased the range on that as well. Um, it's orbital, it's pretty much unchanged. But um, it's up for three here on Tekken 6. It was um, basically, I almost want to say the equivalent of invincibility frames because it, uh, his crushing was significantly better within the starting frames of this move and it would go under most mids with no problem, as long as it wasn't King down for one, for example, or overhead really hard, really priority uh, down for ones and smash attacks. You know, something that looked like a smash, something like this, or that stuff he couldn't beat. But most normal mids, he would go right under it, and it would actually crush it every single time. So he was actually a force to be working with back then. But now they they pretty much watered him down. And also, this move used to knock down. Now it doesn't. Um, also, um, basically on here, we just gonna say you know he's still one of the best punishing characters in the game, uh, pound for pound for most situations. But you know it's some situations that he could get pretty much nothing. You know something like that. It's the most he can get, or he just don't reach at all because the Rai Rising 4 has terrible range at times, so sometimes he can't punish anything. 
it just depends on the situation and the range of some moves he wouldn't even be able to get this so that is a you know minor problem but not nothing to cry over also um his low game um since even since the the first alliteration of him first alliteration sorry of uh taking six laws he uh his lows are pretty bad they um uh, not to say they're not scary at times they're just pretty bad and you know hell sweep which you know i forgot what the real name is called we just say hell sweep this move here is uh it's good oh let me turn counter hit off uh kind of forgot about that sorry um rage i had that on the whole time all right let's get back to normal here um it's hell sweep here you see it only has plus three but a lot of times i run into a problem where because it's only plus three and his moves doesn't have that much range so pretty much all you can get that would be things is a down for one and that can be easily bad dash cancel and will punished um like by any character so there's no instance where he can actually do this and this cannot be bad dash cancel and punished so basically i have to take a risk on my advantage a hundred percent of the time because I'm either out of range because the frames is not high enough to do like a micro dash to get in or he's just gonna completely miss the character because some characters her bosses are so terrible they literally can just hold back just like this and they don't even have to back dash cancel and literally the down for one will miss or you know or the jab will miss because I can do jab after it which would be the fastest things I can do something like that the deck also can be bad dash counsel depending on the character or just hold back um so that is a big hole that i don't like on his offense and you know that um is a problem with me another thing i want to get into is uh Lars's um uh, lows and art blast um his uh lows are pretty bad as far as they don't really do knockdowns and the one that does he doesn't get anything free after it for example like Kuni Mitsu get a hard knockdown and then get a full move after it with another vortexable option Lars does not also his art blast here is negative 13 is what I wanted to mention and it used to be negative 12 so some characters like the machinists can get a full lunch on them. small inconvenience but it's kind of hard for that player to do also we're gonna dive into uh, Lars's lows. Let me do a little character switch here. I'm gonna play with Steve and let Lars do lows against me. And I'm going to uh, punish those. Give me one second here. And Lars is, does pretty uh, bad against uh, Steve in, in most cases due to his low game being kind of very risky. I'm gonna say it like that. So we're gonna uh, set up some things here. Alright. Keep in mind that's one of Lars's best lows you just saw. People call it the tie your shoe. Or the shoe shine low. Or or the uh the uh what they, what's the other word? We, yeah, we just called it them two for here, but it's another word I can't think of. But yeah, let's do this. So Alright, let's block it. That is a lot of damage. 32 damage off of a low that only takes this much damage here as y'all see that's nothing compared to if it's blocked you get 32 taken away yeah basically like i'm saying this is a lot of damage for uh, one of his best lows and he also has to do a full crouch which makes it pretty predictable sometimes so uh that's that's a small annoyance of lars and we also do uh lars's regular generic low down four all right regular down four he loses that much damage just for trying to start some offense and that move is also is negative it's negative two on uh on hit 
I'm plus two, as y'all see. Also, we're gonna try this here. We got another low of Lars. They're right there. They did a change for that and made it that low uh, plus one if he goes into stance. But when you go into stance, you risk getting killed worse by getting lunch punished. Just for plus one. That's um, just whatever. It's weird to me. And the plus one doesn't mean anything. Because he only he's forced to do only uh, round rising moves to even get the advantage. And most of his round rising moves is trash. So, because it's too slow for plus one. So, we're going to uh, go into this. All right, let me block it now. Sorry. There we go. That's a full lunch for doing that low. For trying to get plus one. Very risky for very little damage, as you see. That's all the damage I get. Very risky low. And also, if you do... Let me uh, record this again. If you just do one hit. So you probably be safe. You see the damage on that? That's practically nothing. And so if I block it with as for Steve, I still get 32 damage. That's uh that's insane. That's why Lars does pretty bad against Steve. Just because his ability to punish all the Lars' lows heavily. Most characters all they can get is a uh Ryan Rising 4 or just something that doesn't hurt at all. A lot of characters. But Steve just straight up kills him for even attempting Lowe's. And Lowe's is the only way to stop a lot of his offense. And, you know, his, his offense is almost has no gaps at some times, at certain points. Because uh, you risk trying to get out of it, and it's another delayable version of his punches or. Something to stop you from trying to do a hop kick out of it. Rich Laws doesn't have. So, if he had this crushing that he did back in Tekken 6, he would be able to do a 4 3 and get out of a lot of his pressure. Lars is pretty screwed. If his back is to the wall against Steve, and Steve is going ham with all them punches and punch cancels and sways, um, that's something I just cannot stand playing as, you know, playing as Lars in that situation. Because the moves you have to bail yourself out of those situations. Are pretty so are so obvious that anybody with a brain that's playing with an overpowered character like Steve, for example, um, just pretty much it's just like, what do you do? It's really nothing you can do. It's just hope you do the best guess or outplay that person some kind of way. Um, so that just gives an example of Lars' lows. We already know for his uh, Lars low, for example. Um, let me, let me actually switch back to uh, Lars here. Alright, go back to Steve. I don't have to play Steve now, but I'm just going to pick him. Um, you know, hold on one second while this thing loads. Alright, we got a night version. Okay. All right, I just want to continue talking about Lars' uh, low game and things that I wish that they would have changed, but I guess they're trying to make an identity of them to just have bad lows. I don't know what they're trying to do. Um, like I said, the Hell Sweet, we already discussed that. Plus three, pretty much can't get anything free at all to even try to make this uh, actual pressure situation. Um, also, this move here is just plus one, and you pretty much don't can't really get anything, but just do a one 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 because that's all you have. Just do this and I mean sorry, and do this right here and hope and wish for a counter hit. But most obviously most advanced players are not gonna press anything if they get hit by it. They're just gonna bad dash cancel. Or do something like a, like for this character, he can sway to get around certain moves and get a full hit on my side for trying to continue offense with just plus one. And also, we're um, going to talk about his uh, down one plus two here. I get absolutely nothing free. Absolutely. 
he can get up and block every single thing I do. It's you're nothing free. But you have characters like Kunamitsu again, I said. Just hit you with a low, get a free hit. Um, other characters, uh, who else? Uh, I can't think of right now. It's just, it's a lot it's a lot of characters in the game. They hit you with a low, free hit. Comes right behind it. Which creates a vortex. Lawrence has none at all. He has no vortex situation. Everything he does is either this or that. So if that person texts the right way, he's toast. If they uh, get up and lay on the ground, they may get hit by it because they're just laying there. But Lars doesn't have any pickup moves except this here. That's it. And you see how long it takes to come out. That's a long time. You have to first go into this and then do this right here. So that's characters like Kazuya, Devil Gen, they can just keep hitting you on the ground over and over and over until you get up. Just keep booting you until you get up and you get into another vortex. Lars has none. So anything you do, it is a complete guess. So that's a super annoyance that I have. He has no game to make you get up. So it's like, what do you do? when someone's just laying there on the ground the only thing you can do is to take a big risk to get something that doesn't hurt that much you can try to stomp which that has literally no range they're rolling and or you can just do this and this is super slow sometimes they can actually see this and get back up while mid animation because they see you going for it and he yells this loud animation yeah. so it's like it's so predictable all right, we want to get into uh, his throw game. Just talk about that. We all know he has uh, three throws, which is these throws here. And if they get up wrong, he gets a free oki okay with that. That's okay at times, you know, just depending on how they get up. This uh, also as well, in certain situations like that, if they're close to the wall, that also is an oki okay situation with this. If they get up wrong and it will hit them for free, and this here it just grinds me to this day you have so many characters that can wall stick you with his um up for one plus two and he just does that and you just slide off the wall like nothing happened uh yeah okay that's something they could have gave him to increase his wall um Basically, his scariness of his grab because he only have two breaks anyway. It's just either one or two because they made it so uh, screw friendly in this game where in Tekken Tag and older Tekkens, you literally could do one. You have to break this right here with a one. You look at the hand. He extends the left hand forward. You break with one. You do this. You break with two. This is double break. You have to hit one plus two. Now, it's you just hit anything. And pretty much get out of grab. So it takes the skill level is pretty much non existent. Far as a lot of characters on this game, only certain characters has all three breaks, like Paul or uh, Jen, for example, they have all three breaks. Um, they need to increase the, the ability to do something after that grab. That's like the gripe for every loss, but that's a side grab. And that sucks too. But, uh, that not sticking or wall break do something that's a very big annoyance very big um so we gonna leave the grabs um also his power crush is trash this is i don't know what this is supposed to be it's super slow also it does nothing he gets nothing free at all at all he gets nothing free just an okay situation if they try to move that's it something like that that's, that's all if they try to move then they get that's the only way and there's not really a true mix-up because if I hit with this and you see this you can actually stand up and block that on reaction so it's not it's really not a mix-up at all so and also this move sorry the um this version of the back one if they try to get up they get hit by that that's it and or they can you can do this right here and that hits too but it didn't hit that time but that also hits 
on if they're trying to move. Again, he gets absolutely nothing free. Absolutely nothing. And it doesn't, you know, most people that have power crushes, it uh, does something crazy. Some of them gets a full combo. Some of them uh, knocks down with it, a possibility of a free hit. Um, Lars, he gets nothing. You know, they, they don't care about him anymore. They don't love him anymore. Um, also, we're going to talk about Lars's, um uh, mids here. He has a very strong mid game, but what's good is mids if your lows are bad. So, you know, I, that just man, that just my philosophy on it. Uh, most people are gonna say, "Oh, if you got good mids, then people are not gonna duck." But you know, people is gonna duck because his lows are so bad that they know if they need a comeback, they just block one low one time. Regardless of how many mids he got and how much combo damage he may do with walls because of the uh, band-aid they gave him on this season with this uh, new move right here. Sorry. It's right here. That floats you an incredibly long distance. Only with walls. But yeah. His, um... That band-aid only did so much. But what about his neutral situations? when there is no walls and combo damage when there's no walls his combos are trash and the other characters have 80 plus damage combos every single time lars has to resort to a very glitchy combo which everyone has known to be called the cherry bear mango combo all right let's do the cherry bear mango what just happened right there Sorry about that, y'all. So he has to resort to that only on male characters that doesn't have skinny bodies This that, that this works on every time. As long as you do it right. That's the only way he can get damage in an infinite stage, but it's only against males. So against women, he cannot do high damage situations like this. So he has to resort to 70-ish damage sometimes 60s so he's not a, a very strong combo character only with walls does he shine and that's if you get the lunch most of the time um also um i want to say that um like i said wall, Lars's wall carry is pretty much the best in the game now if, if not in com uh in competition with lee um also, uh, who's another character that can take you everywhere? Uh, not this can also carry you pretty well too. Uh, definitely Steve. Steve can probably take you from the other side of the screen as well. There's um, other characters too that uh, this this really ridiculous. Julia, she still can pretty much take you from wall to wall because it's a different move she can do. From the chain, they made a change to her to try to stop the easy way to do it, but she still can do the same thing. Um, also, uh, we're gonna say that Lars is, uh, like I said, his we talked about this already. Uh, his punishment is among the best in the game. Um, we're gonna play against, um, uh, let's play against Fakuron, for example. Actually, no, we're gonna do, uh, Paul. Let's do Paul real quick. We're not going to do Falcon Run right now. Might get back to him, might not. Alright, so. We're going to do a little recording here. Alright. Lars can actually punish Delphis every single time from all ranges with this move. And even on Wilf, then that's, you already know what's gonna happen. So Lars has decent punishment sometimes if you can uh, anticipate very well. That's gonna be every time. Also, if you're close, he gets this here. So that's just giving an example of Lars's punishment. Um, it's among the best in the game, but sometimes the thing is with the uh, the four back two one here. Because the input is so close to this right here, whatever this garbage is, 
um, it kind of comes out sometimes when you're trying to hurry up and get it. Like I just tried to hurry up because I saw an opening and this stupid move comes out. The, the, they shouldn't, it, it should be a different uh, input or just completely erase that move. Just completely erase it. And also I want to get back to because I'm jumping all over the place. Um, it's full crouch game. It's uh, pretty yeah, lackluster because you know, like I said, it's a, all he has is full crouch is that or it is here. This is pretty slow. It's okay. But it's not hit confirmable to do that. You know, like King, for example, other characters, they can hit confirm this. Lars cannot. So he has to commit to this and get killed. So um, that's something I just, a gripe that I don't have, that I don't like. And also, this as well, I don't like that that's not hit confirmable. It is, they did make a change on Season 4 to make it um, negative 14. But... Because at first it was uh, completely safe, but been, but you can duck the second hit and get lunched. Now you still get lunched, you just don't get lunched by everybody. <laughs> but and also it's still not hit confirmable. Um, also, I wanted to say his uh, full crowds down four two. That's the move they gave him back on one of the previous seasons. I, I want to say season three. They gave him this move back. But they make you have to crouch. I don't, I don't understand. And they could have easily did a up back two or up forward two animation. I mean, uh, input to be able to do that instantly. I think it's something dealing with identity, or they didn't want to make him a uh, complete character yet, or they just don't care about him at all because of the damage he did in Tekken Six. As far as everyone playing with him. Um, Claudio has a down four too, but his is, uh, I think, I want to say negative 12 if he does it. Or negative 14, not sure which one. But uh, mm -hmm. Lars is uh, completely safe if he does it. But Lars has no counter hit tools in the neutral except back four. That's all he has. And this move is inconsistent because some characters, like I said, have bad hurt bosses due to the Unreal Engine, and they can uh, backdash or just hold back, and this move will completely go through their body. Sometimes they can just stand there, and it, it just completely will. And uh, that's something that's terrible that needs to be fixed. The tracking on it is completely terrible. And it's slow, as you see. 15 frame startup, slow. And uh, that's slow for a counter hit. Whereas he had this right here that's a lot faster without crouching and it tracks different both directions uh, uh, pretty much it still can be side step but it tracks a lot better this is a lot faster if you didn't have to full crouch it's about the same frames as this but the thing is you don't have to do this first so you lose frames that's what I'm saying this is this is faster on this game than this because you have to crouch the crouch adds extra frames so if he had the ability to do this move at any given time, Law's counter hit game would be just like everybody on the game. It would be nasty. But they didn't give it to him. So a lot of Lars' uh, comeback factors or anything that he needs to do to pretty much win has to be based off of a whiff. And a lot of whiffs that people create, he can't even reach them. Um, this is going to be his best bet to try to reach them. If it's a complete whiff, but sometimes that's not enough range either. So, what if the person doesn't whiff at all and they just bad dads canceling and waiting on you the entire time? Then you have a big problem. Because uh, then you have to risk coming in with stuff like this to close the gap for the bad dads cancel and they look up and hit you with a quick hop kick right in the last possible frame to cancel. You know, not this stuff here, but just. It's a, it's a frame in here where you can get hop kicks. I've already discussed that in another video, but they look up and do a hop kick or something quick and you get hit just trying to come in because they're a back dash cancel and not giving you anything. So that that is a problem that he has as well.
Alrighty. That's something else I wanted to say about uh, Lars. About inconsistent <laughs> with his uh, moves as well. As y'all see, the uh, move goes right through his body. You know, things with Lars, right? Yeah, anyways, uh, we're gonna move on to switch to another character here. Let me see who else I can fight against. Alright, we're going to just fight against Faka Rum. Uh, but I'm not really trying to do the Faka Rum specific combo. But if anyone didn't know, you can get better combos against them here. Because you can do this right here. You know, things like that. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Let me turn off the uh, Rage. Because it's not needed on his end. And I'm going to put it on for myself. And... I want to say that they gave Lars uh, uh, on this season. They gave him a new move here. It's right here, and that's pretty weak compared to, for example, Anna's version of it. Um, but I guess because it's a low, maybe. But the thing is, about his lows, it comes from this stance, and his low from this stance is pretty predictable because he does that. This is slow, so you actually can duck like a fuzzy guard and stand back up and block this. But that's not really a true mix-up. And everything else in his move list with this move is all high. So pretty much everything can be ducked versus this right here. And that also can be fuzzy ducked as well because it's slower than this right here. So this is pretty much instant compared to this. So here's a... Uh, you know, the ability to mix you up in that stance is pretty lackluster. So when you have no help, obviously people know you're gonna try to do it. You know, you just like, why not, right? So they're just not, they're just gonna duck everything you do in that stance, and or fuzzy guard, and you're gonna block this by accident, and that's all he gets is this. Only way this matters is it's a combo extension. If you um, get them to the wall and then do the move. And it adds more damage on um, with walls. Without walls, this move is trash. So they should have made it a launcher. That that's what I would have said. If you're gonna be a low, at least make it a launcher. Like, let me uh, show y'all what I mean. Sorry, right. still it still hit. Let me uh, go back a little more. I went back the same amount of distance. There we go. Wouldn't that have been a lot nicer to have for a launcher versus just this and that's all you have? Or you have to be by a wall and obviously people know not to, uh, they don't even dug, there's no reason to against laws on the wall. But when you have low health, oh, I have the dug now. But if you go into the stance, they see the stance, everyone knows it's the stance now. And you got to counsel, then try to come back and do some people with a brain knows that that's not going to work. So, this is the only time he can get something. A little bit more than what he was just doing. is because the wall was involved. And we all know how bad this this uh, move is, sorry. Let me get this right. There, right there. That can just be sized up. Or just jabbed out of and or sized up any any direction by the way or just simply jabbed out of so that rage drive is pretty much the worst in the game to be honest with that so that didn't help anything so basically they still gave him band-aids instead of the real problems that he actually have and that is his offense with because he has so many holes in it he doesn't have any screen based mix-ups um this that's not even a mix up right there and this is not either i can see if he had a three hit move like let's say this here had a low at the end instead of this right here only 
or in between it he had a a low like you know just spin into a low and then come back mid or back double low Lars would be scary on offense if he had something like that you know like something similar to Bob or Fokker run for example he has a string where he hits you with the two kicks or he can do the low kick so it's a, a real threat on offense you have to worry about different things he can continue to strain he can stop and charge it to get a free unblockable situation Lars has none of it um, he also I wanted to mention about this here for example um, he has this here does all that charging and it gets absolutely nothing let's do it again plus eight to do what it's like it doesn't do anything and it takes forever to charge up that's even longer than Faku runs charges to get absolutely nothing <laughs> you know uh, this is one some of my gripes as a Lars player and that's why a lot of Lars is struggle on ranked and things like that unless you're an exceptionally good player exceptionally you know like my brother um knee uh cherry bear mango dojin you know all those names starting to turn into koreans and japanese player things like that uh only practice those are all exceptional players playing with this character so you cannot base um uh, him saying he's good because of the things that someone else does that's extremely you know good players not the normal good players that still can win majors here we talking about the best of the best like jdcr playing with lars or knee those are all characters like arson nash even those are all players that can win evo stacked evos and things like that easily so in the hands of them they will win with anybody they'll win with dan if he was in this game with with the old street fighter have a three mechanics yeah they're just stupidly good you know um things like that um you can't base a tier based on what a person can do that's exceptional you have to base tiers on people of the average skill level people that's good they're competitive they go to tournaments they do well no matter what they place top 13 maybe top 8 consistently or even top 32 those are all incredibly good players in big stack tournaments and those those players is what determines tiers of the win rate of those people playing not the scrubs, not the people who doesn't even know what they're doing and just playing on a Sunday barbecue with the character. We talking about those top 32 people. Those who uh base, you base tears off of. You don't base tears off of one exception, the top 1%. You know, that's something that I always want to say again on the recorded uh, video here. And uh, but like I said, Lars is still bad. I don't care what no one says. He has too many flaws. They uh they don't want to fix it because they don't care. Because Lars is I guess boring to the developer's eyes and he's not very used that often as well. But there's only a few exceptional Lars players. We we're gonna say except we're gonna say a few Lars players that has played with him since Tekken Six that you do know about uh, like Dante the One. Um, if somebody heard of him, we have uh, L Train. You have. Um, Let's see who else. Uh, besides L Train, um, what should I think of non Korean Lars players? Uh, myself. Um, let's see who else. Uh, the guy from ATL, I uh, can't think of his name right now for some reason. It's slipping my mind because I got all these Koreans and Japanese players in my head. Uh, hey Dash, that's who it is. Uh, we're pretty, pretty much the only. Lars players that has been consistently playing with him since day one. But yeah, overall, um, I think Lars uh, is okay as a character. He still is pretty bad. He can, uh, like I said, he can win 
uh, against anyone but it's gonna be a lot more work than the average player like for example Leroy uh, or even playing with Bakaram there which is a lot easier to win against every character versus Lars mm -hmm. but Lars can beat uh, any character like I said given in the hands of exceptional players as well we talking about far as uh, high level tournaments and tournaments like Evo and CEO and winning first place every single time uh, or the whole top three is all Lars players that's not gonna happen unless you literally had the best of the best Koreans all playing with them so like I said Lars is one step from being the best character in the game and that and that is uh increasing his damage output in neutral meaning no walls at all and giving him a good counter hit in neutral and you know throw game he can have all three breaks not really required but he could have that that would also help but that's not really the problem the problem is having like i said lows that actually get free hits on the ground or an actual vortexable low or a knockdown low something that hits on the ground without having to go into dynamic entry to every single time and being predictable basically because it's so slow things like that if you had a move that can literally hit someone on the ground every single time without going to stance um a counter hit move in neutral that's consistent down four two that's all i had to give him give it back to him uh even giving them his mix-up back from tekken 6 including with all the changes they have given him um they could give him his um dynamic entry one plus two back the old one plus two that was a mid attack they can give him net as a straight up launcher for a mix-up to be to go with the uh the new rage drive he has he would be scared we'll just say that and um also he'd make his uh tracking move knock down get free hit make it launch do something you know those things would make Lars incredibly good in hands of pretty much every player. But right now, I guess the identity is to keep him uh, bad until, I guess, more of a fan base like him or uh, they just decide that so many people complain they're going to make him good again. Uh, right now, uh, I'm not even sure Lars going to make the next game because they completely forgot about him. But uh, in, but as always, y'all, uh, I'm going to be on my streams. Uh, y'all know where to follow me. Uh, Twitch TV underscore big underscore margin. I mean, sorry, backslash big underscore margin. That's my uh, my Twitch name. And y'all see my Steam name up there. Y'all definitely uh, welcome to follow me, uh, play some games with me, as long as I'm not playing ranked. And uh, uh, peace out, y'all. That was my... Final thoughts on what the state of season four Lars is right now. I didn't go too deep into detail because I didn't want to make it an incredibly long video I had to edit. So peace.